thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Um, it's it's going to be um, a quick introduction on the government cloud, right? So we call it GCC. So that's going to be the, the government community cloud. We're going to kind of talk a little bit about uh, planning to build experiences in the United in the United States uh, government cloud, and we're also going to talk a little bit about some of the nuances that are associated with it as well. So a little bit about myself. So like I said, my name is Jay Hangett. Um, I started with Microsoft about three years ago, and it was right after a successful career with the United States Navy. I've worked in both public and private sector. Majority of my time has been in public sector since I've joined Microsoft. I've worked with different technologies such as SharePoint, Teams, Power Platform, Bot Services, as well as a variety of different services throughout Office 365. So let's go ahead and go straight into our information here. All right, so when it comes to the government, there is a lot of different people and individuals that we have to talk about in regards to what they will be bringing to the actual table here. We have our government leader. So our government leader is the individual who will have the actual guidance that they're going to provide to their, to their people. They're going to have their actual service that they will be providing to their customers. They're also going to be making policies and rules and regulations, and some of that will follow suit. Then we have our government employee. This could be a contractor. This could be someone who's trying to build a collaboration of team services. This could also be someone who is trying to develop a strategy for the next individual. Then lastly, we have our field workers. So our field workers are individuals that steam from our social services all the way down to our engineers. These folks here are ones that are looking for possibly mobile apps, automation, similar to what Nancy was just talking about. They may be looking for different spreadsheets. They may be looking for other Office 365 services that we may be providing. Now with Microsoft 365, we started creating a few years ago, the Microsoft 365 government clouds. So as earlier, I mentioned they were called the government community clouds. We have a couple of them. There's three at this time. So we have the Microsoft Government Community Cloud or GCC. We have our GCC High, which is our Government Community Cloud High. And then we also have our Department of Defense, which is our DOD. These clouds have a couple of different productivity solutions that you can bring in, but there's so many differences between those three and commercial. And we'll talk a little bit about that shortly. Some of the regulations that we deal with in the government sector or private sector, it has to do with what you see on the screen here. Mo many of the services have to be fed ramped, meaning they're being reviewed prior to release to the government cloud. So this is so that these services can now work inside of the government due to the regulations and the requirements it's for, for security and compliance. We also have a list of, of certifications and agreements that we have to meet in order to cover these different nuances. In regards to DOD, we have a full separation of a variety of different things that have to be totally isolated from the other two clouds and the commercial cloud as well. So on this slide here, we have just a couple of in, uh, different sections that cover the compliance. So if we look at the slide, we can see the different uh, phases of of governance and compliance that have to be met for each one of these government clouds, right? So on the commercial side, it talks about how it, it could be fed ramped at high. Um, it talks about we have our US or um, OCONUS for the data center location. If you notice across all three of our government, uh, GCC and GCC high and DOD clouds, all three of those are meaning have our location in CONUS, meaning in the United States. That's where our actual data will lie within the United States. If we go further down the list, these are different um, certifications, different uh, agreements and things like that, that we have to bring forth and apply to our government clouds to ensure that we are in a compliance with the regulations for each cloud. So we're gonna go over a couple of differences here. 
I'm going to talk about three cores. So the first one here, I have OneDrive. So OneDrive, when it comes to file cards, file cards within OneDrive are currently not available in the GCC high environments. SharePoint library access is, is limited as of right now within both GCC and GCC high and DOD. Windows 10 apps, Windows 10 apps that go across the HoloLens, they go across Xbox and a few other services have extreme limitations when it comes to the DOD and GCC high. Next, when it comes to SharePoint, SharePoint connectors that require internet access, those are extremely limited within our SharePoint environments. Um, asset libraries are currently available only in GCC, but not in GCC high and DOD. Microsoft Graph, when it comes to Microsoft Graph, we have so many different features in Microsoft Graph, but approximately about half of those are reaching our community clouds. So for GCC High and DOD, those two clouds, we're not barely getting any. I think it's about a quarter. And then Microsoft Search is not associated with any of our GCC or GCC High or DOD clouds. Uh, next, we have our Teams. So in regards to Teams, we have third-party applications and publishing that go within our Teams environment. And those are, once again, limited to our GCC high and DOD environments. In GCC, we have the ability to use third-party applications and actually publish those. Um, that's a feature that just was turned on probably within the last six months or so. Team members within GCC high and DOD are limited to 2,500 team members per team. One of the big things that we've been working on within the last month or so is to utilize different automations within Teams, such as using uh, message extensions and posting messages as what we call the Flowbot in Teams. That functionality is not available across any of the government clouds. And then lastly, we have our webinars. That's also not available. So the best place to see which services and features are available within your government clouds, if you are a government cloud customer, is to go to the Microsoft 365 roadmap. I'll post a link for, for this actual uh, roadmap um, service so that people can be able to pull that up. This right here is an easy way for us to actually drill down into what we want to be able to see. For example, right here, we have 585 developments and we have rollouts, I can go ahead and select the Microsoft Teams. Then the next thing I can do is go ahead and select the different clouds. In this case, I'm choosing GCC. It actually filters down and breaks it down for us based on what has been launched, what has been rolled out, and what is in development. And then we can scroll down and get a time frame based on what we are looking for and when it will be rolled out or if it has been released to the public. All right. so. With that, I would like to introduce to you some of the brand new things that we are bringing to Microsoft. We have a Microsoft Federal Teams Developer Community that myself and, and a couple of my counterparts are starting to create. The Microsoft Federal Teams Community Developer Community is going to be a community of individuals that are trying to join in with the Microsoft 365 platform community here and some of our other leaders and our peers to now change that dynamic, to change those nuances and to bring forth a full spectrum of services across all of these clouds. So please be on the lookout. We're gonna be posting blogs, we're gonna be posting videos, we're gonna be posting different step-by-steps. We're gonna be bringing forth as much as we can so that our government customers and our public sector customers can now be able to streamline this service. Here's a listing of the, some of the government resources. I'll put all these in the chat and I'll be able to share this with everyone. That first one is that roadmap that we just were looking at briefly. And then right after that, it goes into the different documentations within our Microsoft documentation that covers the, the actual services and the descriptions that are located right now. Those different services will actually talk about which ones are available to you which ones may not be available to you and which ones may be coming, but the roadmap should be the number one resource. And with that being said, 
that ends my presentation. I want to say thank you once again. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask right now. Thank you so much, Jay, for sharing all about the different uh, government community clouds. I know people always look for information based on, you know, differences or ways they can get involved. So great to hear more community stuff coming into here. Um, and people are definitely looking forward to the links um, that she'll be sharing in there. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you.